Okay, hello everybody, we are recording. And this is our Zoom call for Halloween evening on, uh, in 2018. So we're gonna go over some questions that people had and, it's, uh, and we'll open it up for questions. So first of all, uh, we're gonna talk about, um, we'll, we'll, we'll skim through this quite quickly because I have a presentation on, on NF kappa beta, nuclear factor kappa beta. Nuclear factor kappa beta is an immune regulator in our body um, and uncontrolled, it can be a stimulator for cancer. So it's something that we want to keep in control. Uh, it is, um, uh, it's a part of our normal immune response. And this is the danger of, okay, well we want a good immune response with cancer. Um, and nuclear factor kappa beta is a part of the immune response when we want to upregulate that. But this is what's upregulated in chronic inflammation. And there's a difference between a chronic inflammatory state, which can lead to cancer, and acute inflammation, which can be the result of an acute immune response. It's the different immune cells that are stimulated, the different cytokines that are stimulated in those two um, Though they sound the same, they're kind of opposing factors in the immune system. So nuclear factor kappa beta increases cell survival, proliferation, invasion, which um, has to do with cells um, getting into other tissues, which is metastasis right here, and angiogenesis. Angiogenesis, angio means blood vessel, genesis means beginning. So this is growth of new blood vessels. So nuclear factor kappa beta is one of those things that is, remember what I always say, there's nothing in our body that is made in our body that is either inherently good or inherently bad. It's the balance, or we could say imbalance, that um, can hurt us and especially if we have a certain disease going on. So nuclear factor kappa beta, you'd almost want to be upregulated if you were not dealing with, with cancer. Um, you want to upregulate nuclear, it, it, normal things like exercise, upregulate nuclear, nuclear factor kappa beta and stimulate angiogenesis, which is what you want around your heart. And you want the, the growth of new blood vessels and we want cell survival and proliferation. Um, but when we have cancer, we don't want overall cell survival and cancer cell survival and angiogenesis, which is growing blood vessels into a growing tumor also. Um, and we certainly don't want metastasis. So depending on what condition we're dealing with, we certainly don't want to upregulate NF kappa beta. And it is a problem with chronic inflammation. Well, things that upregulate cap, nuclear factor kappa beta is stress. I mean, you think of it, we, when we are under stressful conditions, we need to increase cell survival, we might need to increase uh, uh, angiogenesis, uh, that could help the survival of you as a body. Um, we have, uh, Chronic infection, uh, obesity, addiction can all upregulate uh, NF kappa beta, upregulates these different immune molecules, these are cytokines, um, and can cause issues. Uh, so, those are some things we want to keep in control. Well, curcumin, the, the um, uh, nutrient that is in turmeric is uh, one, probably the best way to downregulate nuclear factor kappa beta. All these other things will help decrease NF kappa beta as well, but curcumin by far, there's the most studies on that will help with that. And then another question that we had come in was about IGF-1, and the person said you talk about IGF-1 quite often could you remind us what IGF-1 is? Well, there's even supplements of IGF-1. So again, is IG, IGF-1 is a chemical that's produced in your body. That's called insulin growth factor one. It's not a growth hormone. It's different than a growth hormone, but it is a growth factor uh, when it comes to cell proliferation and cell survival. So if I was working out and I wanted to increase my cell survival and increase angiogenesis to my heart and tissue, well, you might think about taking IGF-1 capsules. Now, personally, I would never take IGF-1 capsules because 
everybody probably has some cancer cells in their body, so I wouldn't want to upregulate IGF-1 uh, exogenously, meaning taking something that's going to stimulate IGF-1. Uh, there's different growth hormone uh, supplements that are on the market for that sake. So many times bodybuilders, people that are trying to, you know, working out for uh, athletics or something like that will take supplements like this to help build muscle cells, to build tissue cells. Well, that can be very dangerous if you have cancer going on. Remember this slide here, we spoke about this often, that IGF-1 upregulates mTOR. So mTOR is the growth mechanism in our body that is upregulated through a lot of different uh, stimulation. Now, in a sense, again, this is not a bad thing. You need growth upregulation if you injure your tissue or something so that you heal that tissue. But we don't want to be constantly stimulated mTOR if we have a diagnosis of cancer. And some of the things that are one of the things that upregulate mTOR is IGF-1 increase. So we have to be careful with that. Where do we get IGF-1 increase? Well, in this chart, it talks about dairy, but we'll talk about some other things as well. So we want to downregulate IGF-1. So exogenous sources of IGF-1 and other growth hormone fa factors are uh, uh, bovine growth hormone in dairy products, so non-organic dairy products can have our G, uh, BGH uh, hormone in it. That's a strong upregulation of growth hormone and IGF-1. But all dairy has IGF-1 in it. Think of what dairy does. Dairy is the IGF-1s in dairy along with the hormones in dairy upregulate mTOR. Why? Because dairy products are supposed to be for baby animals. What do baby animals become? adult animals. They do so by growing. So, and the IGF-1 and the hormones that are in it help upregulate mTOR to help with growth. That's the whole purpose of that. So, we don't want to be growing cells and increasing replication factors of cells if we have a diagnosis of cancer. So, you don't have to worry about getting uh, recumbent bovine growth hormone because you're not going to be eating much dairy. So, but if you do eat dairy, this is where you want to eat organic dairy that does not have that. So if you're going to be eating dairy, so if you're doing um, the Budwig protocol, you want to be making sure you get organic cottage cheese because you don't want RBGH in your cottage cheese that you are using because even though you are emulsifying it with the uh, um, fat, you are still getting that hormone. So that's not a good thing. So if you do eat any dairy, make sure you're getting organic dairy so you don't get that in there. Liberty meat. So meat is going to have growth hormones in it and IGF-1 in that. And that's why we do limit meat, even on people that we allow to eat meat when we test them. So we don't want you to be this carnivorous carnivore by any stretch of the imagination. Just things like injury, surgeries. We've talked about this in the past. When we injure, cut your hand someplace, it's going to upregulate IGF-1 in order to heal that wound. That's how your body heals that wound. Back to this chart here. So you have an injury, any, any uh, cell damage for, of any kind. This is where it says if you're going to do radiation treatment, you're going to have cell damage, you're going to upregulate mTOR. That's how your body has to heal from any wound, is an upregulation of mTOR. Well, that it's that upregulation of mTOR isn't going to be just specific to that wound. It's going to affect the cancer cells as well. So we want to avoid any surgeries that we can possibly avoid. Uh, and this is one reason why you wouldn't want to work out like you're training for a marathon uh, when you have cancer because you are doing microscopic injury to muscle and ligament damage constantly and you're going to be upregulated IGF-1 constantly to heal from that really tough workout you had last week. Uh, excess body weight, excess glucose, sugar consumption, insulin sensitivity is all going to increase IGF-1 and when you increase IGF-1 we decrease apoptosis. That means we decrease cell 
deaths, we decrease our ability to kill cancer cells. We also increase the risk of metastasis. We increase cancer growth. We increase angiogenesis, new blood vessel growth into a hard tumor, which is not good. So what do we want to do? We want to try to stay away from these things, right? That'd be one really good thing. We want to decrease sugar consumption. Decreasing sugar consumption will help lower IGF-1 levels. Decrease meat. Consider a more plant-based diet. Even if your cancer isn't driven by amino acids and it's okay to eat meat, consider eating a higher amount of plant-based foods. Obviously, no hormones. Uh, staying away from dairy. Obviously, you don't take any of these stimulator supplements like we talked about in this picture. And taking vitamin D can help decrease IGF-1 levels. Uh, matter of fact, if you've had your IGF-1 levels tested, because you can test this through a blood test, and those, those blood levels are high, it's a pretty good chance that you're deficient in vitamin D or you have vitamin D receptor gene defects. So when we look at your genes, we will look at that as well. Consider lowering calorie intake or doing a fasting mimicking diet. Go back to the fasting mimicking diet videos that I made. This can be very helpful. This is one of the things that is so, so beneficial about the fasting mimicking diet is that it lowers IGF-1 levels. So, and Having low IGF-1 levels is essential for cancer patients. Consider using resveratrol. Now, resveratrol is a great, you know, anti-aging supplement, but it's really good for cancer. The negative about resveratrol, it has such a short half-life, so you have to take it throughout the day. Three to five times a day, you have to take resveratrol. If you're going to be taking resveratrol, if you only take it once a day, it has a half-life of only about... Um, five to 15 minutes, believe it or not. So it decreases quite quickly. Curcumin is a great thing to take for just about everything. Inflammation, IGF-1 levels, what we learned about back here in um, the slides before, your NF-kappa beta levels, it decreases that. Curcumin is great for cancer as well, but you really want to be up to, um, you want a good curcumin, first of all, like the curcuclear that we have, which is the tetrahydrocurcuminoid form of the curcumin. Um, that's the form that we use in the curcuclear capsule, so that's also the form that's in the sun spectrum. So uh, the greater, you want curcumin up to levels of three to five grams, three to six grams a day. Probiotics, your probiotics are in your sun spectrum, but consider taking extra probiotics on a fairly regular basis, if not a daily basis, doesn't necessarily need to be daily, but consider taking extra probiotics and switching brands around so you're getting different strains. Zinc can help also decrease IGF-1 levels. Milk thistle also can help decrease IGF-1. Milk thistle is also what we use for the liver. So good for the liver. So consider those things. Other questions that we had come in. Can you use a binder, use as a binder, the Bosa Puduka seed for, for toxins also to clear infections? and dormant viruses. So Mimosa is a great product. We use it a lot for our Lyme patients, not so much for our cancer patients. Um, the, the, uh, it, it, it tends to work really good for funguses, fungi, viruses, uh, some dormant bacteria that are hard to get. Mimosa is a good product to pull that out. Usually it comes in a powder um, and that's what our mimosa does. We sell it at the store right here. Um, and uh, it can work well for those kind of things, yes. Does it interfere with cancer? I haven't read anything on mimosa with cancer, but it certainly doesn't interfere with anything you're taking with that. Um, and then if you're trying to kill um, viruses and bacteria and, and different types of fungi and stuff, the question was, should, should she stagger the kill programs? I noticed there, she said, I noticed there are some kill programs in my overnight sets. How come I still have the fungus? Um, fungus and bacteria and mold and viruses are very difficult to kill. And they tend to uh, morph their frequencies 
uh, quite quickly. That's how they that's how they stay alive in their environment. They're always changing. The reason why they're hard is because they have such a fast replication time, and they're living organisms. So they are changing their uh, their um, they're morphing themselves in order to stay alive. And they're, I mean, if you really want to get into how Lyme stays alive and stuff, read my Lyme books, and I go into greater detail with that. But you almost have to do sweep programs to kill different viruses and fungus. So if you have a, uh, a stubborn virus or fungus or something like that, you have to let us know and we can write a sweep program for you that can be more beneficial. Use of turmeric mixed with coconut oil on the skin. Is that good for you? Can it be beneficial? How's the absorption when you don't use uh, any um, uh, pepper with it? Well, you, you use pepper to increase the half-life of, of turmeric, and you only do that orally, and you only do that if you're taking the whole spice turmeric. If you're taking the tetrahydrocurcuminoid, like in Curcuclear, you don't need to use the pepper anymore because you're taking the most bioavailable form and you don't need to use the pepper. Um, but using turmeric just as it's the ground spice mixed with an oil of any kind, in this case, this person is using coconut oil on your skin, are you absorbing it? Yes, you are absorbing it. Are you absorbing it? All of it? No, you won't. The negative of doing this is the, the ground spice is a yellow color, orange color, and you're going to make your skin look all orange, and you're going to be perfect for Halloween uh, and Thanksgiving. But uh, beyond that, you're going to look like you just, uh, uh, like something's, you're very ill. So uh, if you're using it on a spot to kill, um, like a basal cell cancer or something like that, that's understandable. But if you're going to smear it all over your skin for something, then you're going to, it's not going to be very, um, very good looking. We are in the process of possibly getting the straight tetrahydrocurcuminoid product, which is actually not an orange product. It's a white product as a powder, but we have to find out with the supplier if you could get it because um, when I tried to get it directly from the supplier, I had to order uh, like a pallet of it, uh, but I do have another supplier that will sell me some of his product um, that's used in one of our products that we're making. So I might be able to get the clear, or it's not clear, it's a white product, so that mixed with an oil to use as a topical skin product, then it will be turning your, your skin uh, orange. But we have found it, we've used it as with a cream with DMSO also, and it's worked really well, but you'll still get that skin discoloration when you use just the ground turmeric. Do oils negatively affect sweating? Um, I don't believe so, no. I don't think you're clogging your sweat pores when you're putting the oils on there. So if you were using an oil with an aluminum or a heavy metal in there, like um, your antiperspirants, then the whole purpose of using an aluminum in an antiperspirant is to clog your sweat pores so that you don't sweat. Uh, that's not good. So, but if you're just using coconut oil or you're using a shea butter or something natural like that, no, I don't think you're affecting your sweat glands and you're not affecting sweating at all. Using DMSO uh, over an involved lymph node, yes, that could be very beneficial. You could also use DMSO as a driver. Typically, we use DMSO as a driver. So DMSO is dimethyl sulfoxide, which is a product that is quickly and readily absorbed. Um, now, using too much DMSO, because when it was a big fad back in the 1970s, people could get sick from it. Uh, especially if you have defects on your CBS pathway, you could get sick because it is a sulfur product and you don't, if you have CBS defects, you don't detox sulfur very well. So that could be a problem. But it was really only a problem when people thought it was the cure-all for everything and they like dump their hands in it and soak their bodies in this stuff. And you're probably getting too much even if you don't have those defects and people would literally smell like garlic or sulfur. But used sparingly, as it would we do with uh, with the DMSO zinc spray, um, it can be very beneficial to uh, help kill a cancer. 
or uh, stop a cancer from growing. So DMSO by itself is an anti-inflammatory. When you couple it with something that you want to get into the tissue, then it could be a driver, it could be a carrier of that thing. So often, you go back and watch my videos on zinc in cancer, um, ways to get zinc in a tumor can be de using DMSO. So that could be a good driver. Okay, so we are going to open it up for questions and I'm unmuting everybody. I will ask that if you have, um, you know, in the last few weeks, if you've been on the call and you've asked a question, I ask that if you'll please refrain um, uh, tonight because we want to get other people involved, if at all possible, and other people to get a chance to ask, ask questions. So it's, the floor is yours. <coughs> Dr. Connors, I have a question concerning uh, the meat. Yep. Uh, we raise our own beef. We have our own hay. And so we don't inject our animals with anything. Is, um, is that still a problem? If I eat meat, being on a keto diet, that's, that's primarily, you know, I eat meat once a day at least. Yep. With so if you're going to eat, if you're on a keto diet, you're going to be eating meat most likely. <laughs> Um, and then your source is so important. So you're still going to get IGF-1 from your meat, um, but you're going to get a lot less. You're not going to get any major growth hormones that they're feeding in the feed. Um, so yeah, that's the way to do it. Um, even on a keto diet, you know, you could, you know, go a day without meat. You don't have to necessarily eat meat every day, but, um, the biggest thing is, is that um, you know some people on a keto diet they think that that's that's free range for them to eat meat five times a day, and you're not doing that, so you're safe on that. Great, thank you so much. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Connors, this is Liz Schaffner. I, I have a question that I've asked questions other week. Go ahead. Sour sap. No, sour soap. Soap. S-O-P. Yeah. Uh, it's a fruit that comes from Australia. Yes. It's been very effective. And I think their sour sap leaves make tea. Um, do you know that if it's you know anything about it? Is it? You know, I've read about it. It's hard to get, um, but um, uh, it's certainly anything like that is um, it's worth a try. Um, uh, with anything that you're buying, you you what you have to be careful of is purity. Um, uh, yes. I'll, I'll give you an example. So one uh, product that's really hot on the market, not so much with cancer, but with autoimmune patients is a product called Kratom. Uh, we, I think we, I might even have a cancer patient that's taking Kratom. Um, you may have heard of it, you may not have heard of it. I don't think there's a lot of information around the cancer circles for Kratom, but with autoimmune patients, it's really big. Um, it, you have to be not technically legal in the United States. You have to order it from overseas. We had uh, a friend who went to a friend's house and said, hey, I got this great tea because it can be um, a little, um, I gotta mute everybody while I answer this. It can be a little um, hallucinogenic in a way. Um, it can give you a sense of ease and calmness. It's really great for anxiety patients. So that's the big push for it right now. But the purity is a huge issue. Well, this friend that went over to his buddy's house and had some, had, had to end up going to the emergency room and he almost died. So uh, it's, it can be very dangerous. So I would just be careful on purity because you buy something from China, uh, you know, how do you know if it's pure or not? So that's, that's the only thing that I'd be careful with with some of the products that you can buy. Now, if you buy something that is 
that is labeled and it's sold by a major distributor in the United States, then it's probably safe as far as not going to be toxic, but there's no guarantee that it actually has in it what it says it's in it. It might be 95% uh, ground rice, um, and that's just the risk that you take. The only, the, I guess that isn't uh, a negative in a sense that nobody's going to get hurt from it, but it's a negative in a sense that you're not going to necessarily be helped from it. So that's the difficult part of buying products that that you don't have a lab that's testing it. So um, I'm all for it if you can get it from a reputable source. On the sour sap, I was told that Whole Foods had it. I called them and I'm going to call back and talk to their buyer. And Good then idea. I'll find out a more from him. If you could he post asked, it on Facebook, that would be good information for everybody. I will, thank you. Uh, the other uh, I wanted is maximum amount of foot baths I could do. It seems like when I'm doing foot baths, it's pulling a lot out of my body every time. I mean, I feel fabulous afterwards. You know, well, the, and I, I the only hesitation on foot baths is, is it will pull minerals. So as long as you are getting minerals in your body then I'm not worried about that. Just like doing saunas. Oh, I want to do a sauna, you know, twice a day. I feel so much better. I'm all for it. Go for a sauna twice a day, but make sure you're replenishing your minerals. Minerals. So how do you replenish your minerals? You can take a mineral supplement and again, go back to what type of mineral supplement should I take? It should be a, it should be, um, a mineral supplement that is either plant-based, which would be like, maybe drink another greens drink. That would be a good source of replenishing those electrolytes and minerals. Uh, you could take some, you know, make sure you go back to salting your food with the good Himalayan or sea salt, a good natural sea salt, um, or take a mineral supplement like the, the one that we have that is um, uh, a glycine double bound, double binded, uh, carbon bond glycine product. Um, and I do have a video on, on correct supplements to take, but if you take a good food-based supplement, then, then you're gonna be fine. And you could do a couple a day if you wanted to. Um, uh, that would be just fine. Thank you so much. I, um, I just wanna personally thank you. I was able to listen to some of your recent videos and related to every single thing you said, being a nurse for over 50 years. I, I, I was very touched and it was beautiful. And thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. I just wanna know how you became a nurse when you were six years old. I mean, if you were a nurse for 50 years, that's just amazing, <laughs> but. Oh, <laughs> you're lovely. Thank you. I'm seven, actually 76. Oh my goodness. Yeah, old lady. <laughs> when, when you lose your hair from chemo and you and you have a carry a wig, you you look a little younger, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great! You look very. Young. Well, my here's my new word: stay positive, stay strong. That's great. That's great. We all need that. Well, thank you, Liz. Well, I just hope you know how dearly you are loved and deeply appreciated because oh. the, the uh, information that you gave me on protocol, you know, on, on, it works. It works. It's just wonderful. Yeah. Well, let's, just, just, enough. let's just keep it up, right? And we'll keep our prayer line and order and everybody praying for each other and that's the most important thing absolutely jeremiah 29 11 to 14 there it is amen that's always been my all right any other questions No, 
All right, well, we can call it a day. If um, you guys have any questions that uh, you're afraid to ask, make sure you email them to you, to me, sorry. And for our new people that are on this for the first time or so that have not, uh, or listening to this for the first time or so, um, if you have questions and you don't want to state them on a uh, live uh, call or you can't hear the live calls, email questions, but please put in the memo line of the email uh, Zoom question because we get about 150 emails a day and we don't want it to get lost. So thank you very much. This will be recorded. Oh, we got somebody's hand raised. Go ahead. You have a question? No? Well, this will be this will be recorded and placed on Facebook. So thanks so much, and we will talk again very soon. Thank you, Dr. Connors. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, goodbye.